Hey everyone, Tom here from the SmartStack team. Coming today to talk about AI for texting SMS. Pretty cool idea, right? Where if you're texting your customers and you do that regularly as a business, using an AI agent to be able to help you with that, so give suggestions or take it to the next level of actually having that conversation back and forth with your client. It's very cool. So what we're going to do it for this video at least is showing how you can do it within the Go High Level platform if you're familiar with that CRM. So we'll give a high level overview of the CRM, but also get just right into the feature itself, how you can set it up, make it specific for your business, how you like to talk, and the goals you want to achieve with your customers. So we'll walk through that, of course, and show you the pros and cons of using it in a system like Go High Level, a CRM like that. If you're less familiar with that platform, but you're thinking about it, we're going to do a video on how to get started with Go High Level very shortly. So if you want to hit that that subscribe button you can be notified when that comes out and we'll see you on the other side all right let's get started here so yeah this here for anyone who's not familiar with the dashboard this is this is a relatively new account uh, with uh, go high level um, this here what you're seeing here this is kind of what you get it initially uh, this is your setup guide basically and it's going to go through a bunch of stuff here and obviously not going to spend time doing that but just kind of what you're seeing on your screen wanted to explain that over here on the left hand side this is going to be all of the i guess different places you can go you can go your dashboard which is going to be kind of you know just interesting stats conversations will be chat so this will be relevant as we get into something more ai stuff calendars contacts opportunities and, and payments so i won't go through all these but this is kind of like a, a standard crm where you have contacts being people you interact with uh, you know meetings that you have with them conversations that you have with them and you know opportunities deals you know different things that are happening in your business that you want to track there so that's kind of everything above the line there kind of your meat and potatoes if you will and then and then everything below here there's going to be more stuff that you can do to kind of market to them. Now, yeah, as a platform, this this video won't be a whole, I guess, um, overview of the Go High Level platform. It'll just be more I, getting right into the AI thing. But just to kind of set the standard, again, this is here a little bit more kind of setting things up. Things like, okay, marketing is email blasts. Automations are like workflows, automatic things that happen. But even setting up websites, that's possible there. So a lot of interesting things here, sure. But where I'm going to spend a bit of time and how we're going to set this up is going into the settings area here. And so, yeah, like settings you'd expect, there's quite a bit more here. And you get into the nitty gritty. This is kind of your business. This is the things that you can do in your business. And then they kind of have a big other section here so what we'll focus on here as under business services is of course the conversational ai or conversation ai it's a new thing it's really exciting and, and we're going to get right into it here so this is what it is and actually what you can see here is you can create as many bots as you want and you know why would you need different bots well just for different types of conversations right so maybe you want to have one bot for your website but then a different bot if someone texts your number right and what i mean by different bots is different settings you'll see when we get into it you know things like what their goal is how they should be interacting what information are they pulling to then provide to the customer so you can provide many different kinds of bots and it's just as simple as doing this if you want to create a new one um, they give you some templates if you'd like i'll just show you just from scratch what you can see and starts going through all these settings here but i've already set this up a bit and i think it'll be a bit easier to understand all these settings with some good examples in place and so we're going to do that so <clears throat> this one here blue mortgage question and answer blue mortgage is just actually another um I guess you could call it, say, sister company we work with. So we work with a bunch of people. We help them with different CRMs, and it's for Canadian mortgage brokers. Uh, we're in Canada here. Um, so that's just what Blue Mortgage is, if, if you're curious. And I had to just use a website just because that's where it actually pulls information in from. So let's get right into it, and let's go through each of the different settings so you know exactly how to set one of these things up. So, yeah, when you get in here, it all kind of is laid out for you. I think that's kind of the big, I would say, bonuses of why you'd want to do it here is that it's just so easy to pick up and go. Now I'll get into some of the downsides maybe a little bit later, like all things there's pros and cons, but here it's really just kind of a part of your settings in the CRM that you're, that you're working in here already. And you just kind of have to go kind of step by step by step. So let's go through each of those steps. So <clears throat> this one here, bot name, whatever, that's more for you. So you can call it whatever you like. And then we get right into it, kind of what are the interesting things. So you can just turn it off, right? So if you don't want this bot doing anything, it, just, it could just be off, of course. Suggestive, this is more um, if you just want 
yeah, suggestions maybe as it implies, right? So I'm jumping over here just real quick into my contacts. And this is a sample contact that I have, Mr. Tom Tester. And suggestive basically means that in this, this is a messaging area that you have, as you're getting inbound requests, it'll actually appear, it'll show a suggestion that you can choose, right? You can click, it'll show up, then once you click it, it'll appear in this message area. You can modify it as you need to and hit send. So if you want a little bit more control, if you don't want it just going back and forth, then this is the area to do it. A lot of people, I think, prefer the autopilot because that's kind of the whole point of it. But yeah, if you have a tough time, I guess, thinking of good text to, to go back and forth with people on, the suggestive can obviously help with that. But yeah, the autopilot, I kind of applied it, implied it, and we'll spend some time, I think, talking about this one specifically, which is whether it is your website, whether it is people texting you, the bot is just automatically going back and forth with the client and providing the answers based on the information and how you trained it, which we'll get to in a second. Um, I guess, you know, some caveats there. If you're in a heavily regulated industry, it's something you want to be really, really careful about. Maybe suggestive makes more sense. But if it's, you know, I'd say it depends on the industry, but also, I guess, what the bot is doing, right? If a bot is just booking an appointment, then whatever, right? I don't think that it's giving advice or doing anything that could get you maybe to regulatory issues. Um, but if it's more trying to answer questions and someone's asking about, you know, I talk about mortgage brokers, that's an area we know, hey, what about this loan, that loan? Can I qualify this, that? Maybe you want it to be a bit more suggestive because you don't want to be giving the wrong answers and be getting yourself in a bit of trouble you know, with the regulator. So just something to, to kind of keep in mind. Uh, but let's keep going here. Um, basically, <clears throat> What channels do you want, right? So I talked about texts, um, chat on your website, sure. Uh, so there's that chat, or actually, sorry, live chat. Um, but you can also do WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, and you can do as many as you want, right? They add up. It's not one or the other. They all go together. Um, and then finally down here, I mean, this is you can get into some, you know, more fine-tuned stuff. Um, name the business, whatever, that's fine. This one, wait time before responding. By default, I think it's like a minute. And I don't know, for me, it's, you know, that's you trying to make it look like it's a human. And I think people appreciate when it, yeah, it is, um, looks like, a, if people usually know if it's AI, I guess you could put it that way. And if you try to make it seem human, sometimes it gets off-putting. I think it's usually pretty clear. And I think people are okay with that. They're like, okay, this is a bot. It's going to act like a bot and I can get my answers quicker anyways. So that's it there. Maximum message per conversation. This is just, I think, more of a fail safe, right? Because if you know, you just want to answer some quick questions and it's taking more than eight back and forths to do that, it's like, okay, maybe a human needs to get involved. So this is how many times it'll go back and forth before it'll stop. And then finally, honestly, don't know what this one is. Send bot to sleep. Um, I don't know why you need to send a bot to sleep, but you can do that. Say, hey, if you haven't gotten a message in two hours, the bot just goes to sleep. <laughs> Okay, let's keep rolling here. There are a couple more things to cover. Bot training, so I'll just save these changes. <clears throat> bot training here, so this is where it actually gets the information about what it should do. So here, the best place to start is probably your website, right? So if I talk about Blue Mortgage, you know, I just put this in here. So I just say copy and then paste, and then it'll get the data. Now I've already done that, so you can see I've done that down here. And it was trained yesterday at 540. If I wanted a refresh, I can just click this. It'll refresh my information. The other kind of interesting thing about this to keep in mind is that it's not going to crawl every sub page, right? It's not going to then go into the about us and then into the pricing page. It's just the one page that you're on. And so, yeah, we do have an FAQ page. And so to crawl that, I had to put that in separately, say FAQs, right? And then now if I want to also include the pricing page, I'd have to do that as well. Um, yeah, and actually, do you know what? This is just a new thing for here, but you can actually see that you can ch choose some of these other ones and it'll actually try to go out and find all the URLs with the same domain. So domain me, bluemark.ca. So maybe that's not 100% right, what I just said. I mean, I think that uh, it's worthwhile to explore these things, but you also wanna be careful about controlling what the bot gets, because what I also find is that if you give it too much context, too much information, it leads to some hallucination. So my kind of recommendation here is give it exactly what it needs and nothing more, right? So if this is a bot to answer questions, give it the FAQ. If it's a bot to talk about pricing, give it pricing. But if you give it a whole host of information, you can get a little hairy pretty quickly. So um, 
yeah, so let's put that in and you can see what it looks like. It'll start crawling. It usually takes a minute or two, so I'll let it go. Um, and then, yeah, if let's just say, for example, the FAQs, I didn't have all the ones I wanted in there, you can manually add some FAQs. And it's just as simple as this. You could say, um, how long has Blue Mortgage been around? We were founded 2018. I'll just hit save and that gets added. You don't see it right away actually. It's one thing I noticed with the FAQs, but if I, you do hit refresh, <clears throat> you can see it'll, it'll show up there. Okay, last thing here is the goals. Now, if you remember when I started from this, the beginning, when I started to create a new bot, it said, hey, you could, you know, appointment setting, general Q&A, or start from scratch. When you choose one of those pre-baked ones, I did general Q&A, this is what it gets, right? And you can see here, I'll make it big. It's pretty good, honestly. I think that for me, in my opinion, I wouldn't change too, too much. These, This, again, is, I think, one of the big advantages of using a tool like this. They've kind of seen a bunch of things. I wouldn't change too, too much. You can see that it's just about assisting customers, build trust, and help them out. Um, you know, you can change things like this. Our wiki, I don't know what that means. Um, our, you know knowledge, right? Let's say that. I don't know if that's better or worse, actually. But in any case, you can do that. And then as you start to scroll, you can see, hey, what's the intent? Just adding, you know, helping people with the queries. This is, you know, again, if you were a booking bot, this is where you can come in and change that intent. That also goes back to the place of, hey, if you're getting into some regulatory issues where you can change the intent. And then, yeah, it gets into some good stuff here of like, okay, use this. Don't use this, right? Use this. Don't use it. So just allowing it to be a bit more conversational. So you, of course, can add to this, right? You can say, hey, I'd like to whatever use, you know, howdy partner. <laughs> I don't know. You can, you can see if it'll actually use it here. And so you can really fine tune it of exactly what it wants. Um, and so, yeah, you can see also it'll ask for other things. Um, hey, what do you want to happen? So this is kind of an interesting one where if you are asking for a field update information from them then you can do that here let me just double check this yeah so that's exactly it so it's again it's kind of cool it's like a natural language where you can just say hey what i really need is can you get the birthday of the contact right so it doesn't have to be like a very defined thing and this is just kind of you're giving instructions to the bot and you're saying, okay, if you get it, put into this place or that place. Um, so that's what these things do. Um, and so there's other actions you can do as well. I won't go through all of them, but that's kind of an interesting one. You got trigger workflow. So if you get certain information, certain um, conditions are met, it can do kind of a action reaction in the CRM, book an appointment or just stop the bot if certain conditions are met. So that's pretty much it there. And so really kind of where this all, um, I guess, ends up is saying, okay, you have a pretty good bot. This can be used, of course, in SMS or any of these other um, tools here. And really the place where you can really kind of fine tune this is just to start using it, right? So let's just try it. Let's, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna say hello. And so this here is exactly kind of what the client. So if a client texts you, this is what the AI bot will respond to. Hey there, what's on your mind today? And so again, this is Blue Mortgage, this CRM say, so let's say, what's your pricing? There you go, right? So it was able to go into those pricing pages and it can see exactly what that is. It provides that type of information. Anything else you need? Yes. Have you guys been around for a while? So if you remember, I put that in as the Q&A. Let's see how the APOT does. I'm just trying this out for the first time since 2018. Perfect, right? So you can see that, and this is exactly what the customer is going to get. So it's great for SMS. It's it's great for chatbot on your website. So it's a really cool one. And I guess just to kind of zoom out a little bit, why I focus on this one here, I think the biggest pro is that it's so easy to set up. They make it very simple. You just have to set up a few settings, and you're kind of off to the races. The downside, I would say two big ones, honestly. One, of course, it's embedded in the CRM, right? So if you're already using another CRM, it's not so easy to use this one. It does require you to do it. But if you are using Go High Level or if you're not using a CRM already, it can be a very powerful tool. The other one too, I would say, is just the pricing, right? So just every response is two cents. Honestly, uh, for most businesses I see, it's not a huge issue. Um, but also if you're getting to the point where um, okay, I think it's about 50 bucks to get unlimited AI employee plan. And so it's, yeah, if you're, you know, 
I think what's that math? It's going to be about 2,500 texts a month. If you're doing that, then sure, okay, maybe it makes sense to upgrade, but the two cents won't add too much, but it's just something to keep in mind. And especially if you are on this autopilot, that could really add up. Whereas if you're maybe a bit, if you know, you do autopilot and many channels, you get, you know, a little bit expensive pretty quickly. But if you just stick with the suggestive, that allows you to control the cost. So I always say start there, probably with the suggestive. And then as you find, you know, trying new things and you find that, hey, I'm not really editing this too much, then the autopilot's really good. The last thing that I'll say that's really great about this too is that it's not just the desktop. So there is a mobile app that goes with it. So whether you are using suggestive or autopilot, it can start the conversation. But if you're out and about and the client is texting you, and you want to text them back really quick, you can do it right from the app. So that's another great thing about it. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I guess, yeah, if you do have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you do want to try out Go High Level, try this out for yourself, please use the link in the description. It really does help the channel. But that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time.